Yeah, g'day YouTubers, Tinker O'Toole again here with another video. Today we're going to talk about the manufacturing of splitting axes and mauls and how they're manufactured and go into a, a few details about that. So we've got a few brands to look at. We've got the Husqvarna, we've got uh, the Fiscus, we've got Still Oxenkopf and we've got Estwing. Uh, to name a few, which are the brands that you would probably most like. Now, most of these are forged uh, by uh, hammering. So what normally happens, a billet comes out, which is red hot. They're picked up by a pair of tongs. They're put into a press. The press uh, runs continuous, just up and down, up and down. And it's hammered. It's a hammering type press. So... The billets are forged into shape, and if we put a picture, a few pictures up while I'm talking, the first picture, if you have a look, is a press, like a hammering press, and you can fit that out with different dies on there, and these dies, you take the red hot billet with a pair of tongs, and you'll put them into the various dies to get the various shapes, even the eye, you'll see a guy has a little piece of metal, picks it up with the tongs to make the eye and to even change the shape of the wedge and everything else. So there's a whole different bunch of tooling on that press. And as you can see on the picture, uh, use a pair of tongs and put it into the correct uh, spot to get the correct shape. So you've got to be quite skillful at it. The only difference between that and the old uh, blacksmith is that the old blacksmith had to use a hammer, whereas you've got a press here, a hammering press, that's uh, got hundreds of tons, so it makes the work a lot easier compared. But it's all done by hand. Now, there's another type of forging called press forging, where they have a mould and they just put it in once and it presses uh, under high pressure. Now, one thing about forging is that it removes any microscopic uh, voids or air bubbles uh, is another word that we could use. Microscopic voids in the metal so that the metal is uh, less prone to cracking uh, or chipping. So there's all different ways uh, of forging and different methods and the other thing is the metal that's used c60 is popular but there's a lot of look there's there's probably a couple of dozen different types of uh different metals that can be used for an axe so it all depends now interesting enough when you look at the oxen cough and you look at the factory and the way that it's all done, they really do a fantastic job. And you can understand why some of these axes aren't cheap, uh, especially some of the German ones and the Swedish ones, because there's a lot of time in actually uh, the preparation to actually make one. Now, the other thing is, and we can put another picture up, is... You'll notice, we'll put a picture up of uh, some belts, uh, linishing type belts. And you'll see them linish the face of the, uh, the cheeks of the axe. They'll use the rounded part of the wheel, which will fit into the cheeks quite well, and they'll give it a bit of a linishing. It depends on the type of axe, or and it also depends on whether you can linish, whether you've got a curve a uh, convex finished or a concave finished. So there's all different types of linishing belts and there's all different types of ways to do that. But what is one of the problems that I see is in the final uh, part of finishing the axe, on the linishing belt, and we've got a picture here, you should be able to see it there, where the guy is actually holding... Uh, the axe head or maul head, and he's putting a angle on there. Now, when you're putting that final beveled angle on there, you could make a mistake, and you could put the wrong angle in there. So 
Now, typically, I've got a Oxen Cough, uh, the Still Pro Splitting Axe. I'll bring it up here. That's this one here. Now, there's the Oxen Cough logo. So, this is the Still Splitting Axe. It weighs 2.8 kilo with this extra overstrike protector and a very uh, thick hickory handle. This is a brilliant type axe. The only thing that I disliked about this, and I did a bit of a trial on it, is that the angle that was on the bevel here was 85 degrees. Now, I've brought that back to about, oh, I think it's about 60 degrees. I've taken 25 degrees off that angle and what was happening when I first got it was I got a log which was about a foot in diameter I hit it about four times and before it actually split the first couple of times it bounced so I knew I thought look you either got two choices here you either reprofile it or you just put up with the bouncing so I tried it a few times and I thought, no, nah, no, nah, this, is, this is not really doing the job that I want it to do. So I had to reprofile it, and I brought it back to about 50 degrees. So we've gone from about, it was, I think it was 85 degrees. Yeah, it was 85 degrees, and I brought it back to 50. So I've taken quite a lot off it. It definitely works better. Now, being 85 degrees, the beveled edge was only about two and a half millimetres but the bevel edge now is about eight millim. You can see, if I just run my finger along there, there's all oil over these. I always put oil on them uh, so they don't rust. So I've got a beveled angle of about eight millimeters. And that beveled angle really does work well and it splits timber much better. And you'll hear a lot of people turn around and say, oh, you know, you don't need it to be sharp. It works okay blunt. Well, yeah, that's not exactly true. I've got an nest wing here. Brand spanking new. Look at that. That's an nest wing. Have a look at that. That is a machined finish. That is sharp. Really sharp. From the factory. Sharp as. You cut yourself on that. That's almost razor sharp. And there's the angle of the bevel. It's about 40 degrees, that beveled angle there. That's about 40 degrees. So, and that's from the factory. Now, there's only another, there's a couple of manufacturers that uh, bring their uh, splitting axes and mauls out. Fiscus, this is the X27. I'll just have a quick look at this. It's uh, also, and there's a picture, we'll just put a picture up there. This is from a uh, video from uh, Fiskers that show they're using hammering presses to make the shape of their axes as well. The only difference is that I notice you end up with a bit of a rough finish along the edges. So, yeah, they're using hammering presses, but they don't worry about these edges. Typically, you'll find out that a lot of the Fiskers on the edges got these this rough finish they could sort of get rid of that by more uh press hammering but they don't but the point that i want to make here is that fiscus use a very sharp uh bevel as well that's got about a five millimeter bevel you might be able to see it if i turn it over the other side five millimeter bevel there you can see that line now they use 25 degrees on the wedge and they use 30 degrees on this secondary bevel. All the Fiscus splitting axes use that same angle and you can buy a little sharpener. This is from Fiscus. One side is for a knife. They push it that way. That's for knife. Push it that way. That's for your axe. Little tiny arrow there points towards there. 30 degrees. So, Husqvarna, this is the Husqvarna 2.8 splitting axe. And 
I'll just get it out. It's done exactly the same, but it has this line on there, so it's forged exactly the same way as the uh, Fiskars. Beautiful finish on them. Made really well and sharp. So, yeah. Now, we just have a brief look at the uh, splitting axe from uh, Still, which is made by Oxenkoff. It uses a 20 degree wedge shape angle there. As I say, the Fiscus uh, 25 and the Husqvarna was about 22. So this is about 20. And we've got a beveled angle up there of around 50 degrees. And as I said, it was 85 degrees when it was brand new. Now, another Oxenkoff uh, that I've got is the still Oxenkoff Maul. 3.3 kilo. Uh, but it's got a total weight of about four and a half kg. Nice big uh, head on there for banging in the wedges. It's also got a nice angle on the wedge, near 30 degrees, not quite. And I had to reprofile also this edge here, uh, which is around about 50 degrees now. 50 degrees works okay. Now, in Australian hardwood, what I've found out is anything over 45 degrees starts to get a little bit harder and you start to get a little bit more of a bounce. So it's your choice to use it as is or reprofile it. Certainly with the Fiscus, Never have to touch it uh, from brand new. Husqvarna, don't have to touch it from brand new. That also goes for the uh, splitting maul, that, which I've got. I didn't bring it out, but you don't have to touch that. The Estwing from brand new, don't have to touch it. Got the right angle, perfect. But the still, both the splitting axe and the maul had the wrong angle. When I say the wrong angle... I'm talking about Australian hardwood. While it might work perfect on the softer timbers from overseas, we do have the hardest wood in the world, and especially with the eucalypts, small grain, uh, the length of the fibres and the grain structure is different than Pinus radiata. So if you look at some of the softer timbers from overseas, the density, they're, less, they're not as dense, longer fibres, and they don't interlock. One thing about the eucalypts, Small fibres, anywhere from 0.5 of a mil to 1.5 mil. The softer type uh, timber goes anywhere from 1.5 mil up to about 4 millimetres in length, and they're not twisted. When the fibres are short and twisted, they really make a matrix that's really entangled and jumbled. All twisted together, it looks like a bowl of spaghetti, but all short fibres. And that's what holds the wood together. And that's why it's so hard to bust it open. So therefore, if you've got a broad angle, it's going to take a lot more force. And this is where the Fiskars and the Husqvarna and the Estwing, straight out of the factory, work perfect in the Australian hardwood. The still, this is the... The pro splitting axe. Now that it's reprofiled and it's got the right angle for Australian uh, conditions, it's my favourite. I really that and the Est Wing. They are my two favourites. The splitting maul is quite heavy. You got to start swinging something like this. You're going to know about it, especially if you've got to do it uh, for a long period of time. You're going to get fatigued a lot quicker. So. A total weight of about three kilo is probably uh, all I want to use. And that the S-wing handle, the actual handle, especially the uh, hickory and, the, and some of the hardwood handles, 
add to quite a bit of the weight, uh, up to at least a kilo uh, weight on the handle in a lot of cases, especially on the uh, Australian Cyclone uh, products has spotted gum hardwood. So it's fairly high density uh, wood and it's got a bit of weight to it, up to a kilo on a long handle of about 900 mil in length. So the Fiskars has the composite handle, which doesn't add to a lot of weight. You've only got a weight of about two and a half, uh, two and a half kilos on that, which is not a lot of weight. But because of the long handle, uh, you can get quite a bit of velocity up on that. And these are extremely popular. They really are. They really do good wood. Do good, I should say. The Husqvarna, it's only got a 700 mil uh, handle on it. That could quite easily have had an 800 mil handle on it. I'm not the only person to say that. A lot of other people would have this splitting axe uh, turn around and say that. So what we will do, I'll grab the Husqvarna with a 900 mil. Uh, it's a different type of splitting axe. It's very popular. Uh, look, there's people that don't like the Fiscus. There's people that don't like the Husqvarna. I find out that they're all good. Uh, I've got no problems with any of them because... Not one splitting axe or splitting maul is going to suit every situation or every type of wood that you've got. So I haven't found one, because let's face it, at the end of the day, it's just a piece of metal with a wedge shape. As long as it's the right shape and as long as it's got a decent size handle on it and the weight's right and the angles are right, that's, that's all you need to do. And it's made out of good high quality steel. It'll work fantastic. So we'll get the, uh, we'll just go grab the other one and we'll uh, show you what that looks like. Okay, so I just went and got the uh, Husqvarna. This is a sledge axe, as they call it. And I went out also and I got the Fiscus uh, splitting maul as well. So we'll just have a look at this one. Got a little bit of a leather sheath cover on it. I fitted a overstrike protector on this stainless steel overstrike protector. You'll notice that the other Husqvarna, this one here, has a small overstrike protector on it. I always like to fit an overstrike protector, especially on a wooden handle, so easy to damage them. Now, this Husqvarna is totally different than a lot of the splitting axes because it's about 230 millimeters in length. It has a very narrow angle on here and it has about a 30 degree angle on here and it's got a very small beveled edge right on there look it really does work good uh, it's a, I think it's about an 800 mil length handle not 900 I really do like an 800 mil length handle, and I think that's what this one is. I'll just measure. Yeah, 800. Whereas this one here is 700. Uh, so the 2.8 kilo Husqvarna composite type handle really could have been longer. Anyway, it is what it is. This really does work well. A lot of people don't like them. As I said, uh, I brought it, I tried it. It works fine. One thing that's a little bit different than a from a, a, a splitting axe to sometimes some of the mauls is the width of the blade. You'll notice the width of the blade is significantly smaller compared to the width here. And that means that the energy over this length is totally different than the energy over the width here. But one thing about the, the width that you've got on here is that you've got a curve on the blade where this blade is flat. So normally you should strike in the middle of the blade and that will help to split the wood. Now the other one that's really popular worldwide is the Fiscus Maul. This is a ripper, this one. Look at this one. This is the heaviest of all. I've got some stats on there. 3.6 kg. It's got a total weight of 5 kg. And you'll see HW 4.3. That's head weight. 
what that actually means that if you sit that head, hold it horizontal, and you sit that on the scale, the weight will be 4.3 kg. So when you're bringing that down, there's a lot of force that's going to uh, slam into the, uh, the log. This, by far, is one of the heaviest that you'll get out there, an eight-pounder, and it really does work really good. A little bit wider on here compared to some of the splitting mall. Some of the splitting malls are only around about 60, like that the Husqvarna one. This is a lot wider. The only difference I found about this one is that I had to reprofile the edge. This edge that's on here at the moment uh, is only around about 45, 50 degrees, whereas before it was around 70, something like that there. Again, not suitable. So it brings us back to finally recap uh, a lot of the splitting axes and splitting malls that come into the country, into Australia, do have the right edge on it, like this. both of these Husqvarna's are fine. All the Fiscus X25, X27's, all of the X series, whether they're hatchets or whatever, all got 25 degrees on the primary wedge and 30 degrees on the beveled edge. And you can use that special sharpener, as I showed before. Uh, so it really depends on what timber that you're splitting as to what's suitable. Uh, I do have a bit of a formula, and my formula is roughly for every 100 millimetre or 4 inches diameter, I like to have at least a kilogram of weight. So if I'm going to bust open a log that's about two foot diameter, <laughs> I need something like this, at least it's, yeah, a total weight of five kg. So if I'm busting something up, it's about a foot diameter. If we need a kilogram for every four inches or 100 mil, then I'll need three kg total weight. That's where this one comes in. It's 2.8 kg. Had it had the longer handle on it, it would have been beautiful. This has a total weight of 3.1 kilograms. So that's actually very good to split timber around a foot in diameter. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're going to split something, whether it's two foot in diameter or three foot in diameter, if you split around the growth rings, around the edge of the log. If you start, if you've got a three foot log and you start to split in the middle, you're going to need a lot of energy and a lot of weight to do that. So it's not really the easiest way to bust open a huge round. The easiest way to bust open a huge round, come in four or five inches and only come in off the edge by a couple more inches and take off the corners. Uh, you should be able to take four corners off a round log, even if it's in three foot in diameter and try and work those four corners before you start to split it in the middle. Don't start on the middle first. Leave the middle to last once you've taken majority of the corners off there and try and split with the growth rings where possible. Okay, so come to a bit of a conclusion uh, here. So what's the best shape and what's the most efficient splitting mall? Well, I guess there's a few things to consider. One of them is the type of wood that you're splitting. Some wood is more interlocking and uh, twistier grain than others. You know, short fibres with Australian hardwood, twisting, interlocking, as opposed to Pinus radiata, which has longer grains up to about four millimetres, fairly straight, fairly easy to bust open. So pretty much you can bust open pine with just about any shape or anything pretty pretty simple and straightforward so the best shape well i personally think that fiskers have probably got the best shape and that's in this type of wedge here but with this type of wedge a lot of people don't like the composite handle i can understand that people like the wooden handles wooden handles actually add up to quite a bit of weight they're much heavier uh, but they're not as durable uh, unless you've got a strike protector on them, uh, on the wooden handle. So Fiskers all have that 
25 degree wedge shape so that's 25 degrees on the wedge and they have 30 degrees on here on all their splitting axes have that shape when you go to the splitting mall that's this one here it's 35 degrees on here and this beveled angle on here was in excess uh, of 60 degrees now, I've probably got it to about 45 degrees at the moment which is okay it works all right so and I've got the smaller version of this this is just over a kilogram in size so it's only a little small one and it works quite good as well so with this type of shape on the Fiscus X27, when you go to a much larger splitting uh, mall, you find out that the limitation of the angle is has to be increased. So the best angle is the smallest angle as possible. And that's what Husqvarna have tried to do. Husqvarna have a very, very small angle, only of about 11 degrees here. And this is very, very popular. But Fiskars are very popular all around the whole world. And even if you were to look at the mall, it certainly gets a great share of worldwide attention and the sales of that is extremely high so the conclusion that i've got that if fiskers have definitely got a a great shape to their splitting axes and their splitting malls also the husqvarna this shape is very similar to the uh fiskars it's 22 degrees on the wedge 22 on here and about 30 almost identical to the fiskars so you're limited by that wedge shape if you design a mall in most cases you'll find out that the face will be in excess of 25 degrees as on here 35 degrees i've got some other malls and they're in excess of 25 degrees as well so overall the more shallower angle that you've got and the sharper the edge and the less beveled angle that's on there, the easier it will penetrate the wood. The only other thing that we could talk about is a lot of people don't think that the edge of the beveled edge needs to be sharp. Viscous is probably the sharpest that I've seen Every time you feel the edge of a brand new Fiskars, it is really sharp, really sharp. So was the uh, Husqvarna on both of these. The Fiskars was more sharper. I always sharpen my splitting axes and my splitting mauls from the day that I first get them. And I sort of monitor how that goes over time. And generally, the hardness of a splitting axe or maul is generally around 55 Rockwell. So 55 Rockwell uh, is not a bad hardness because if you go too hard, the axe or the splitting maul or, or the splitting axe are prone to chipping if you go too hard, especially with a thin edge. So thin edges will dull quicker, and I'm not going to sharpen it up every time that I use it. So I generally sharpen them up and I wait quite a while before I resharpen. Because the more and more that you sharpen them, the more and more metal that you take away, and what maybe once was a 30 degree angle can end up a lot wider. Because when you do sharpen, especially by a file, that you will reduce the height. So if we were to constantly sharpen this type of axe and we're to measure from this point to this point if we keep running the file over here you'll find out that you will eventually reduce that height uh, and that's not a good thing and that's why it's actually good 
that Fiskars actually make this unit here that is very gentle on the edge and it's a great way of sharpening. So just bear that in mind that it's not a good idea to constantly sharpen the edge up with a file because you're just removing a lot of metal. Anyway, I hope all that information helps out there. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.